Hey everyone, uh, this is Manny here, and um, I'm here today uh, with Produce Like a Pro, and I'm going to show you something that is something new to me in my world, and I think it would be something cool for you to maybe look into or at least watch and see what you think about this. I'm using that one to sell weird devices or something that usually isn't pro audio, but a friend of mine named Vahe is one of the greatest engineers I know. He's just a lifetime friend. We talk a lot about music and recording, and he was nice enough to come down to my studio and bring some pieces of gear that he uses in the movie industry. First, we'll just talk about what this is uh, we're going to be discussing. Uh, it's about something being in phase or out of phase. So everybody has microphones, everybody has wires, everybody has electronics. Sometimes in electronics, in the microphone, even in a cable, lines can be crossed and a mic signal that you think is positive could be reverse negative. So that if that's within a drum track, then you're going to have one mic that's going to be out of phase. So in the movie industry, when they're putting the little lavalier mics in everyone, they get all the mic packs, they put the mics up, and they run this unit called the Cricut. This box I'm holding with the speaker is called a Cricut S, and the unit I have taped in front of my NS10 is called a Cricut R. This box has a speaker in it that's going to make a tone come out. It's going to go through this microphone, come back out my NS10s, this unit receiving the sound on the other end, which has a mic built in, will be pulsing either a green flash, that means it's positive, or a red flash, which means it's negative. It means if this mic is to be correct, when I put the cricket on the front of the mic, it should be green. And when I put the cricket on the back of the mic, it should be red. And that tells me that this whole theory and how this box works is truth. And one thing I'll point out that I am holding a ribbon mic and all ribbon mics that are figure eight, the front is positive and the rear is negative. And that's always the case. If you have a 414 or condenser that has multiple mic patterns, when you click it on figure eight, the front would be positive and the back would be negative. Why do you need to know that? Some of the best mics in the world have great cancellation. It's behind the mic that because of the negative uh, helps the front of the mic sound really more intense, and you're not picking up this sound, but you're picking up this sound. All right, so here we are. I'm looking at a ribbon mic. I'm going to open up my speakers. And like I said, if this is correct in what it's doing, you're going to see a light come on that's going to be green for the front of this mic. So I'm going to turn on the cricket. All right. My speakers are on. I've... Tape that, which I recommend doing a better way of doing it than this, but we're doing it on the fly. So here's the front. Now, you can see on the camera that that green, let me turn this off, just flashed positive, which is correct. The front of the mic is in phase. So now I'm going to do the rear of the mic. That's crazy. So I'm able to prove that the, that this mic, this cable, my preamp that it's going through, through my system, into the power amp, out of my speakers, is telling that box that this sound source is in phase. And I, I, don't, I don't have anything in my life of recording besides using your eyes and your ears. If you were analog and you were looking at meters, you would have to listen to multi-sources to know if it's in phase, out of phase. But this little speaker tells you if your mic is correct. So I'm going to go, I just did a session um, with Pete Thomas and I have a full drum setup. Prior to Pete Thomas's session, Vahe was nice enough to come by and walk with me for a few hours through my rig. As much as I can say, I've been recording for a lot of years. There was a crack in the armor. I'm not as badass as I think I am. And four of my mics, I realized, are pin three hot and they're out of phase. Now, when I was telling, I was mentioning to Warren when I was mixing, um, I'd find myself having a, the control of the mics that I think were, they were in phase. And this hand was on the mics that I thought were, would, would have been out of phase. So during the mixing, I'm doing this dance of toms are up, sounds great. And then... When he stopped playing the toms, I didn't like the sounds, and I would raise up some of the uh, C12s. 
I love that. Sounds great. As soon as he starts doing drum stuff, and I was doing this dance of that, but I didn't realize that this hand that was raising up the C12s was favoring them when the toms weren't happening because these were out of phase and then the toms were in phase. Eric's going to be nice enough to hold the cricket on every single mic through the session. And you'll be able to see on the Pro Tool screen um, the cricket coming through. It'll be coming through my speakers. And I'm going to, I already changed it in my DAW and on my uh, hardware. So I'm going to reverse that and I'm going to put back in, uh, I changed the phase reversal after I've gone through my drums. So I want to go backwards. So let me undo what I corrected with the cricket. And then you could see how that changed my world last night. Okay, so everything is, the only thing that's remaining out of phase was the bottom of the snare, which is general rule. You'll have that out of phase. So I think that's the only one I have in. Um, oh, this is out of phase. Okay, so now everything's flat again. I think I'm a stud. I'm doing everything right. I have the killer drum set up. P. Thomas is in. How could I be wrong? And then the cricket blew my mind and showed me that my mics are pin three hot and they were incorrectly or correctly out of phase and I did not even know it. So let's go in the other room and we're going to do the cricket test on every mic and then I'm going to correct it by using my preamp and physically changing the files to be in phase. So let's go do that then. All right, we're gonna do the kick drum right now. We're gonna be checking it if it's in phase. All right, Eric, go ahead and put the cricket on the kick drum. Awesome. So, the kick drum is in phase. When I'm talking, obviously it goes out, but the kick drum flashed me green, so that means it's going through the kick drum mic into my preamp, which is a MA5, into my DAW, into my power amp, into the speakers. And when it comes out of the speakers, it is green. So that's telling me that we're cool on the kick drum. And as I'm talking, you can see that flashing, so it's picking up anything that comes out of my speaker. We're gonna move it over to the snare, the 57. Awesome, uh, 57's in phase. That's running into my Avitas MA5, looks great. Uh, we're gonna go under the snare now to the 414. Something's wrong in the cabling there. I don't know what that is, analog gear. But I flipped that out of phase here. So it's intentionally out of phase, that's okay. That crackling will have to be worked out. Could be a bad cable, could be in my TT bay, but we it's good to go through your gear. So I know I need to check that line for the uh, snare under. Okay, we're gonna be moving to the rack tom. All right. That's in phase, so we are so far doing good. Uh, let's go to the floor tom. All right, floor tom looks amazing. Um, that's in phase. Now we're gonna go into the hi-hat. Uh-oh, looks like we got a no-no. All right, so the cricket now has told me that that old AKG uh, D224E is out of phase. Older mics and sometimes older gear or it would be called pin three hot. The whole world is pin two hot. But for whatever reason, there was an era of older gear that they would switch the pins on the XLR. So I think as we run through my older mics, we're gonna be falling into a problem with them being out of phase. And I would not know that unless, I mean, obviously sonically you can hear it, but sometimes because of the quality of the mics and the other mics around, it's really hard to tell. So I'm already saying sign number one, the cricket has told me that my hi-hat is out of phase. Okay, so now we're gonna to move to the ride. Uh, no, no, number two. So that is once again an older mic. That older mic going into my preamp, into the speakers and coming out is out of phase. 
when I did this session two nights ago and I started the setup, I did not know that. And then when I mixed it, I was mixing around those, bringing up the toms and then moving those around, which I sounded great. But basically, it was like an ocean of me fighting some of these mics that were out of phase. At the end of the day, it still sounded killer. But after we do this, it's going to sound even better. And I think that uh, being a producer and being serious, you have to look at yourself sometimes. And it's good to double check yourself and not get full of yourself that everything you do is great. Well, obviously, in my world here, I'm going to have to um, use the cricket to check sessions to make sure everything is really great. Uh, so now we're going to move on to the... Frank Sinatra mic, which is called the AKG D24. It's the mic straight up above. That that's the ball uh, has the ball shape on it. Okay, let me check that. Cool. All right. Now we're having a a pattern now that's happening. So all my old mics are coming in out of phase, and that is a center overhead, which is super important for the drums. All right, so now we're gonna move uh, to the C12A overhead, single overhead, and we're gonna check that. Go for it. Okay. Okay, cool. So that is telling us that that is in phase. So now we have an issue. Do you have two mics next to each other? The C12 is in phase, and the Frank Sinatra mic is out of phase. So we have a major problem there. We're gonna deal with that after. Now we're gonna go to the 414 that's on the side shot. So this is a C1282 mic. Cool, all right. All right, so that's flashing green, so that's in phase. Thank God the C12s are coming back in phase. We've assessed my setup, and just one note to this. I did this, thankfully, the night before Warren and everybody shot the, the P. Thomas thing. So in doing that, I was able to, with the cricket, correct some things that I may not have noticed. And I don't know if anyone else would have, maybe someone would have, but it really was an eye-opening thing to what's happening here. So my older dynamic AKGs are obviously out of phase and that means they're pinned too hot. So I can either maybe in the mic cable, have special mic cables made for those that are flipped or every time I use those, I have to make a mental note that I need to flip them on the hardware. So now that I know that the kick, the snare, the understair, the rock tom, and the floor tom, C12 up above, C24 on the side shot, those are all in phase. My hi-hat is out of phase. My spot mic, well, spot mic on the hi-hat is out of phase. Spot mic on the ride is out of phase. And my Frank Sinatra mic, which is out of phase, looking down on the drums, the biggest issue with that one is it's major because that is standing next to the C12 and those need to be in phase. So what I'm going to do now that I've ran through the session on my Cricut, I've made a mental note of what's in and what's out. On the hardware, I'm going to make my hi-hat. Now I hit the face switch. So technically, so hit the hi-hat right now. I do the hi-hat mic. Okay. Cool. So you saw the light flashing green. Now my hi-hat is now in sync with all the other ones that are in phase. The other mic that was out of phase was the ride mic. Hit the ride mic. So I'm gonna change the phase on the ride. Okay, cool. So now my ride is showing me that it's in phase. And then let's go to the Frank Sinatra mic. All right, so as you just saw, when he started with the cricket, it was red. That means it was out of phase. I engaged, this is going into an old API uh, by Bear Naval. I engaged the phase, now it's correct. So Pete Thomas has already removed his drum because we're a day after the session. So these things that I changed uh, within the session um, was really crucial. And that's why I asked Warren that maybe it would be worth uh, talking about. So the cricket, for me personally, and all the years I've been recording, is mind-blowing because I can sit here, set up my drum mics, 
and with the help of an extra hand, like Eric or someone, an assistant, go through all my mics and make sure they are at least going through my system in the correct phase. And sometimes uh, 1176s or, or modern boutique uh, compressors or um, preamps you could be using, sometimes they're wired backwards and not in the wiring of the positive negatives going into the unit, but in the transformer, they could be flipped. If they put it in backwards, it'll be opposite. And a lot of mic preamps, you have to go hit it positive and then it flips to negative going out. So it could be a dozen places that it could be crazy. All right, so I think that's the little test of the cricket. My assessment is that as a producer and an engineer, I've learned something in the last 24 hours that's crazy cool. And I'm going to be trying to apply using the Cricut on every session I can. And if you were to go to another studio and you're not familiar with it, and they have a whole set of analog and old mics and that stuff, if you have the Cricut, you could know really quick some of their old mics that would be in phase or out of phase. And that'll save you the time of when you're putting up a drum setup to know what's going and what's not. And at that point, then, you will be adjusting mics to go lower or higher as opposed to dealing with a mic that's been wired out of phase and you're just going to have a nightmare trying to make it work. I don't know why I'm talking in this mic. I have a mic right here. In my lifetime of recording, I really love that tools like the Cricut are actually something that are worthy to carry around in my backpack for any session. Uh, this is Vahe's. Thank you, Vahe. I put a little picture of Vahe right here. He was nice enough to let us use it for the Warren session and I appreciated it. Uh, Vahe is an amazing engineer, amazing insight on recording. And even though I've been recording a lot of years and he has, the fact that we still search out things to be better at what we do. And this little secret is something about the mics being out of phase. Some producers wouldn't mention that because it makes them look like, wow, how did you not know that? Um, it's really difficult when I deal with all this gear and I set up mixes and I think everything sounds great. And then through mixing, I am floating around between in phase, out of phase. You can still make it work. You can still land on your feet. You can still do a great mix. But this tool is actually going to help me professionally on my own music and other people's music to know when we start and we hit record that at least on my end, I'm square with things being out of phase. So anyways, I just want to sign off. And um, hopefully there wasn't too many crickets out there after this produce like a pro.